welcome back to Getting Past the Premium, everybody. Today we've got uh, an episode with Ryan and I discussing uh, the difference between tools you can you can buy and insert into your your process and having a process. There's a difference between those two, and so we have a great conversation today about um, how to build your process and then how to insert those tools to make it most effective. Welcome to the Getting Past the Premium podcast where we focus on breaking down risk management problems bit by bit until we find a solution. Here are your hosts, Elliot Bassett and Ryan Broad. What's up, man? Morning. Yeah, it's, it is morning. Yeah. So we've got the uh, the old coffee today. Right. Without whiskey. <laughs> let's, let's be clear. Or Bailey's. Yeah. <laughs> Straight coffee. Straight diesel. Yeah. I'm going to need a few. Uh, yeah, it's, it is a Monday. So we're, uh, we're back at it, but we've got a good conversation we kind of wanted to hit on because last episode, you know, we talked about launch, uh, which is a tool to help walk through the sales process. Um, so we thought we'd have our conversation with, with the two of us today around, you know, what's the difference between a tool like launch, uh, you know, whether it's any insure tech software or anything, and a process, having a process, right? Yeah. What's the difference? How do they fit in? You know, how do you build a process? How do you evaluate the tools? So, kind of all that conversation exactly. around that topic because it's it is important. You know, you can go out and buy all the tools in the world, but if you can't effectively implement and execute them into a consistent and repeatable process, it's hard to make them effective, and then you end up spending a bunch of money that you don't need to spend. Yeah, because you're not getting the, the ROI on it, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of tools out there. Always have been in every industry. seems like it's been getting more and more. There's been more and more out there over the last couple of years, it seems like. Yeah. A lot have popped up. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of excited to have this conversation. Just it's, it hits home with everything that we've been trying to do. Yep. Uh, not only um, within Eller Brock Norris, but also trying to take that and insert it into launch knowing that just a tool isn't good enough yep so maybe let's start there like what maybe just give your thoughts on the difference between you know these tools and then a true process and how they can fit together yeah so i I don't know i want to go back and take it a little bit higher level just from the industry perspective you know um, we talk, we've talked at length on here about products, <clears throat> how they're necessary, how a lot of them are fantastic and how they fit into certain clients. And yeah. there's a lot of different tools to help facilitate making that easier mm-hmm. or making it more effective, et cetera. But What we kept coming back to is, you know, what's the tool for having a, having a a current client walk into your office and say, Hey, the agency down the road has a better tool and a little bit better product and they can save me 15%. Like I'm thinking about leaving. What's your tool to save that? Yeah. You know? And so, that's really what we've kind of set out. To, I mean, tell me if you agree with uh, not only Eller Brock Norris, but launch and getting it to a point where we have a process to deeply understand the client, build a relationship that can't be replicated in the industry by having a uh, again, that deep understanding of what's going on inside their company by spreading the definition of risk just beyond PNC and mm-hmm. everything else we talk about. Um, and consistently being able to provide and articulate the value that you're bringing to that client so that when you get a call that says, hey, you know, we shopped this year and you're a little, uh, you're a little high, or they don't call you <laughs> mm-hmm. that you got a shot at saving the business. Yeah. Well, I think that's exactly right. It's it's 
the value being in your process, in the experience the client has, the relationship they have, versus just whatever tool you know you use throughout that process. Because to your point, the tools are going to change. Yeah, they're going to evolve. Um, and so the way that I kind of look at this is, it's really important to start with your process, whatever that is. You know, ours is going to be different than another agency, another company out there. Um, but start there. What is that process you want your client to go through that is going to not only generate an experience for them that yeah. is better than what they're going to get elsewhere, but also that shows them value over the long term? And then figure out what tools you need to insert into that process to, to make, make it, it make it more effective and, and more valuable to the client. Yeah. So kind of walk us... Uh, I guess we've kind of broken this up and split it out into really two different processes. There's your prospecting process where you're going to go out and try to earn and and get a new relationship. And then there's the client process. Yep. Like, I guess, kind of walk us through high level each one of those processes. Yeah, well, I think... Uh, maybe I'll, I'll break it down from the standpoint of like our thought process going into building that. Because again, I think that that's the important piece because everybody's going to build their own. Yeah, right? I agree. Um, so for, for us, it was important to say, what are we trying to accomplish in that prospecting process so that we can go in and present something to the client that is going to be different, better, more effective than what they might else see elsewhere in the industry. Because as we've talked, at the end of the day, if we're just coming in and presenting an insurance product, we're competing against other insurance products that they're being probably presented uh, from other agencies, other companies, whatever it is. We may not have all those products. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that we're going through a process that understands the client, understands their needs, their wants, their problems, uh, their long-term goals, whatever it is, so that we can come back and say, here's how we can help solve that. Mm -hmm. So we designed that in a three meeting process. Um, and again, you can do it in a variety of ways. Um, ours are in person or virtual, you know, meetings with the client, but there's, you could do questionnaires, you could do surveys, you know, you, there's a lot of different ways to gather some of that information, but really we, we went through and said, okay, what are we trying to accomplish? And then what is that cadence of, of meeting that we want to um, go through to accomplish that? And then what, are you doing inside of each of those meetings, right? And that's sometimes where those tools can fit in because you know we were building assessments for our, our risk profile valuation. Mm -hmm. And there's tools out there that you can use, like we've built launch, but you can use whatever else it is to design and build a tool that can facilitate that. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think it's important to just identify out what are you trying to accomplish first and then what's the process that's going to allow you to consistently do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. On the prospecting side at this point. Totally. There's a couple things that come to mind in the prospecting phase. Like, <clears throat> as you were saying that, you know, one thing that you got to remember is that a client, like, nobody wants to make getting business more difficult. Yeah. You know, like, mm -hmm. we, we, talk with sales teams all over the place that are like, well, you know, I'm just going to get the business and I'm going to, I'm going to BOR it, right? Like that's the new thing to do. Yep. We're just going to walk in and we're going to explain to them how we're going to do it. And then we're going to have them sign it over to us. And then everything's going to be great. Like, how are they going to leave you? Yeah. Same way they came in, right? Right. And so like, you're, think about, your prospecting process as building a defensive wall around that client. The more value that you can bring that prospect during that process and continue to stack those bricks makes it way more difficult for the next guy to come in and just say, oh, hey, you know what? You, you don't have this tool or I'm a little cheaper. Just come over here. Yep. So... You know, that's, yeah, it, it's interesting. And, and here's the other thing um, that I was thinking about when you were saying that, that I also think it's important to talk about. You, it, it's really easy to build assessments. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. questionnaires and yep. go out and get data on a client. What do you do with it? <laughs> like, how do you spin that around and take your value proposition as a company and throw that into winning the business and being able to articulate that in a fashion that actually shows the client how they can get to the finish line with you beside them? It's a good question. I mean, I know that we've put a lot of thought into it. I think that we've got a long ways to go, but it, I think it's a great question for everybody to ask as you're building your own process because, you know, you want to make sure that you can, what, what I'm getting is you can throw a lot of complicated crap in front of a client, right? You do the assessment, you gather all this data to your point, and then you throw it all at the client and they just go, that's all great, but holy cow, what do I do now? Yeah. You know, and so being able to simplify and articulate it, which is one of the best things that we found. Once you design the process, you can then edit the process. You can make it better. Yeah. Once you're driving that consistency, you can figure out what's working, what's not, where do you need to improve. We're doing that on in our benefits uh, side right now where we realize that our presentation is just aren't as effective as we want because we're doing a lot of what we're talking about here. We're throwing a lot at the client and not making it simple enough for them to say, yes, that makes sense and I want to move forward. Yeah, We're showing a ton of value, we think, but that, that's not being picked up by the client because of everything we're throwing. But again, it goes back to the importance of once you have that process, you can then iterate on the process. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not as reliant on the insurance company to drive that process. Right. In the past, it's always been we're going to copy, quote, prey on the uh, insurance, you know, mm -hmm. and we're then relying on the insurance carrier's process to do that. Yep. Uh, we want to flip that and have it be our process that we control and that becomes a piece of it. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know if that totally answered kind of your, your thought or question, but I think it it's just important that all of those things come together when we're building that process. Yeah, I think that's a huge piece that is missing in the tool world today yeah. is there's plenty of shit out there that's going to poke holes. Yeah. Like wh how do you articulate how to fill them with the value yeah. that's come? Because ideally the value that you bring as a person, right? A risk advisor, maybe they specialize, maybe they don't, but they all have, strengths, weaknesses, and things that they're bringing value to the client themselves, then you've got the agency or the company's value proposition, right? And how they can help plug holes. How is that being effectively communicated to the point where the client's like, yep, or prospect, I'm ready to go. Absolutely. Like, that's a tool. We feel like we've, we're, 70% there with launch, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, well, yeah. I mean, a lot of the things that we're doing with, with launch are with the, all of these conversations and thoughts in mind, right? Um, but I think what we end up doing a lot of times is, is shiny object syndrome, right? We see a sweet tool and then we try to build a part of the process around the tool, yeah. which is, is just backwards. I mean... We're in the, as we talked, we're in this time right now where there's so many tools out there, kind of what you were just saying, that can poke holes, can do whatever, which is great because we have a lot of solutions to these things that maybe we, we've had to do manually in the past or whatever. Yep. Um, but we need to make sure that we're coming at it from the right perspective. So design the process yeah. first. Tool's not the answer. Absolutely. It might be temporarily. Yeah, you can use it as a crutch <laughs> to get there for sure. Um, but again, you'd want to know where you want to go before doing that. But you said something interesting earlier with which, you know, use it, use the process to build that defensive wall. Um, it's so true though. One of the things that we've always challenged ourselves with, and you kind of talked around it, but you know, how are we going to show the client value when we're 15% more expensive? You know, in the past that was always, you know, if, if you had an insurance proposal that was 15% more expensive, you weren't getting the business, mm -hmm. right? Unless you had found a hole or a coverage gap or something like that. But, yeah. but apples to apples, air quotes for everybody that's listening, uh, quotes, you know, you weren't winning the business. Yeah. So 
that's what we've always tried to challenge ourselves saying is, well, let's give ourselves a chance to win the business. We know that we do a lot that other folks aren't, or let's figure out how we can yeah. and show that value to the client. Um, and so think, think through it from that perspective. If you're listening, like that's what your process can help drive is not only does it set the defensive wall up, but if it's offensive as well, you know, because you can go out and you can show them how you're going to do this over the long term. And if you're more expensive, show them the value of that, you know, show them the value of the 15%. Absolutely. I mean, the first question that you should ask yourself and what we asked ourselves is, uh, do consumers buy on value? Mm hmm. They do in a lot of other capacities. hundred percent. I mean, I look around and I'm, you know, uh, you see really expensive cars, you see really nice houses. I was on a vacation last week. There's a lot of people spending a lot of money for different experiences and stuff like there's people have no problem spending money mm -hmm. if they know that they're going to get an equal or better return on what they're spending. Uh, I have a hard time believing that that system doesn't work. And so you apply that to our industry. And you say, okay, well, the insurance carrier is 15% lower with a competitor. Like, how do we compete? Mm -hmm. And if your answer to that is, well, we can't, then you don't have a value prop and you're not bringing, you know, a, additional value to the, to the prospect. And I think that's where, you know, that's where the, that's where the world's going today. It already has. Like, if you're not on the train, you got to get on the train. Um, so, yeah, 100%. I mean, that was the first thing we asked ourselves. Do, yeah. do, do consumers buy on value? And that answer is yeah. I think it's certainly – it's absolutely true. I think in our industry, there is a – we've trained clients to purchase insurance, financial services, whatever it is, in a certain sure. way that we have to overcome and get them to realize that, though. Because they do ultimately, you know, they just don't apply it, that thinking a lot of times to our industry because of how we've trained them. You think maybe you should probably do that in the uh, prospecting process? I think that's a good time. Yeah. yeah. Re-educate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's, a, that's a big piece of it. Totally. It is. You, you can't ignore it because the messaging, even today, from all the carriers... It just blows my mind how it's all still completely centered around price. Mm -hmm. But think about what they're doing too. You know, I mean, it makes perfect sense. It's hard to articulate claims value, claims handling yeah. value from an insurance carrier perspective. And people don't care. I mean, I had this conversation recently with a prospect and he, uh, he, it was on a, it was on a home, uh, home and auto deal. And uh, in decent, nationally known insurance carrier was three grand less. And he's like, I'll take that gamble every year. Mm -hmm. That if I have a hail claim or whatever it is that they're going to mess up handling my claim that bad, if I save three grand a year over the next five years. Yeah. And so uh, it's really hard to articulate that. They sure see price. Absolutely. And I, well, and it's cost benefit analysis then, but he, here's the difference there. If, if we do our job and through the process and understand what is important to that client and we figure out that let's say the claims handling was really important to them because maybe they had a bad experience in the past yeah. with a claim that completely changes potentially who we propose. Yeah who uh, we recommend to them. Maybe we show them the $3,000 less option, but we say, you know, we have not had a lot of experience with their claims handling. I don't know. Um, but this other carrier we know is lights out, but it's going to cost you three grand more a year. Yeah. You, you make the decision at that point, but we maybe don't even present that other option because we didn't, if we didn't go through the right process of understanding the client's needs and wants. For sure. Well, and then take it a step further, right? Like where... It, you know, let's say that we don't have another option. Let's say that we're just, we're three grand higher. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you show value to the client to save that business? And to me, the answer is simple. You broaden your definition of risk. Yeah.
you know, and that's what we focused on heavily, that's mainly awesome. on the commercial side. Yeah, big time. And so we, you know, prospecting process, right? We designed out and then you build the tools in that can help facilitate that process, which are going to be different for everybody. Uh, but then you mentioned earlier too, there's also a process for once you have a client, how do you continue to show that value? Yeah. And if, you know, you have additional services, how do you figure out if those services make sense to that client? Uh, is that's an equally important process, sometimes harder to design. Uh, you'd think it'd be easier, but you have a lot of moving parts. You know, you have to do certain things yeah. from an insurance perspective. How do you get the client to want to meet on relationship or strategy or other things that you want to do? Um, but again, it's an equally important piece that I think oftentimes gets missed, yeah. especially on the insurance, the PNC side, because you know we get the coverage in place, and it's kind of a it's really easy to call me if you got a claim. Otherwise, we'll we'll work on the renewal when it comes up. Yeah. You know, and obviously we're doing touch points in between and whatever. Um, but again, designing the process you want that client to experience uh, is super important. And again, then the beauty nowadays, we have so many tools out there yeah. that can create a freaking sweet experience yeah. for that client. Um, you know, several that we've seen recently, Wonderwrite being one, making it super easy to gather all the application information, yeah. you know, uh, which traditionally is a pain in the you know what for clients yeah. <laughs> and so there's things like that that make it you can make a really sweet experience no you can i mean the fact that you're calling it an experience is key too right understanding that doing business with somebody is more than just a a, a transaction today again transactions are uh involve just mainly products yep. right we're we're creating experiences I think it, it is super, super important. So how would you go about doing that, Elliot? Yeah, I think it's it's a similar to what we were talking about in the prospecting process. I think first you obviously have to design the experience you want the client to have. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it really, it, you mentioned it's, it's important to come at it from that experience perspective because it's really easy to think about like what's our solution? You yeah. know, well, not every client – is going to see that solution the same, but everybody's going to experience something the same. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's little things like it could be time saving. Uh, the part of the experience could be saving them time. Yep. Um, part of it could be saving them money. How are we going to do that? You know, or it could be uh, like an employee survey or something. You know, instead of just saying, "Hey, it's, employee surveys are great," it's we've got it designed out. It's part of our process. Here's when we're going to do it. You know. Mm -hmm. Things like that, um, gathering information could be, a, like we were just talking, could be a significant value add to mm -hmm. the client if we can make that process a lot simpler. Um, so I think it starts with lay out that experience you want to drive. Ask clients, you know, mm -hmm. go out and just talk to some of your best clients and say like, uh, you know, hey, here's what we're thinking about doing. Yeah. You know, what are the things that, you know, you hate doing the most or that are the biggest uh, you would see the biggest ROI on. Yep. Um, build that into your experience. And then uh, then the hardest part actually becomes articulating that to the client. Mm -hmm. So how do you show the client the value of that experience and that process? Uh, so that, again, that impacts your prospecting because you're going to be talking about that experience and that process yep. once they become a client. Um but again, it, it is hard to articulate sometimes. So then you, that's the next step is you got to say, here's our experience that we want to drive. How do we articulate that to the client? Mm -hmm. And then what are the pieces that you need to build in, obviously, to execute on that, which gets back to the tools. If that's where the tools are, there's a third or fourth part of the designing out the whole thing. Yeah. No, it's 100% right. You know, and, and what at some point you got to take into consideration your profit margin. When Absolutely. you're developing an experience and the tools can help drive that to a certain number that you need to be successful to reinvest and go get more prospects, right? So, um, yeah, it's 100% right. It's uh, We've been working on this 
super heavy and uh it's kind of been an eye-opening and fun experience oh, you know yeah. to uh really sit in the client's shoes and think outside of the box about what is going to drive an experience that is super valuable to the client that you know we're obviously iterating and will continue to iterate over time but like today as we sit today it can be really powerful and really valuable and getting that feedback on what do you expect from a relationship not just feedback but taking all of that data from outside industries and you know yeah starbucks and their experience i love thinking about how other industries apply to what we do it's just massive man and there's a lot of firms doing really cool stuff when you see it mm -hmm. and uh you know, turning that back around and as you mentioned, then being able to articulate the client, that's what they really want to know. Like they really want to know. That's why people test drive cars. We're talking about value. Mm -hmm. It's like you want to, if you want to go buy a Lexus for $75,000, you're going to test drive it to see what it's going to feel like after you buy it. Yep. So how do you have that same type of feeling when you're sitting down and you're talking with somebody about their risk management program and it, like, how do you give them the drivability feeling to turn back around and say, this is exactly what it's going to look like. This is what it's going to feel like. Here's what you're going to get when you're going to get it. Here's how this translates into value for you, you know, for them to be like, oh, I get it. This is sweet. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. All right. I'll give it a run. Yeah. It's way more fun. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of fun to be talking about that side of it and just the stuff that we can control uh, in the experience is way more fun to talk about than, you know, going in and quoting in prospects insurance or whatnot. That's a huge, you know, one of my, I say this all the time, you know, control what you can control. Mm -hmm. The awesome thing is, is I feel like we have way more control over all of this than we ever thought or has a match past. Yeah. Or even have had in the past. Yeah. With where the industry's at. Yeah. So, yeah, man. It's all uh, it's all super, super exciting. And then, you know, once you get that process built, and I guess, you know, one of the things we talk about a lot is how if you're going to start being an advisor, uh, however we articulate that, mm -hmm. right? You're... Um, want to get more on the experience relationship side to be able to go head to head with somebody providing value over price. You want to get past the premium? Maybe. Okay. Uh, how do you, you know, start to take little steps to execute on an experience yeah. for a client? How do you eat an elephant? Other than Not buying launch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I think, you know, there's a lot that you, that you said in there that's super important because a lot of times, too, we, you know, if, what you just said, there, how do you take small steps? And one thing that, you know, we've noticed certainly is clients a lot of times don't understand what what we do, right? We're, we live in the industry every day and they don't necessarily know, like, what does this tool do or if we're building in a tool? What's the implementation look like? How much time is it going to take? You know, what's the value I'm going to see? And we think it's super simple and easy because we do it every day. Mm -hmm. But the client doesn't know that. Mm -hmm. You know, we were just having a discussion. We were about a presentation where we were going to put, you know, quarterback of all these different things on there. And I was like, well, I don't know what that means. What does it mean to be a quarterback to the client? Mm -hmm. You know, and so it, it, again, it does get back to being, thinking about it from the client's perspective. Yeah. And then breaking it down from there so that it's very clearly and easy, easily, easy to articulate. Um, they know exactly what they're getting into. They know exactly the, what they're going to experience and it becomes a lot easier to, uh, have the client understand where you're, where you're coming from. Agreed. And again, it gets back to the best way to do that is, is to have that process that you can iterate on. Because it's really difficult if you're doing it different every time mm -hmm. to be able to understand where the breakdown is. For sure. Um, but once you've got that, to your point, start small. Yep. You know, 
start with an overall meeting structure or start with adding one thing in to how you currently do it and see how it works, mm -hmm. see how it goes, and then take the next step, take the next step. Um, once you do that, you're going to start to figure out pretty easily that you gain some momentum, things start to move in the right direction, you get some feedback from prospects or clients, you start to know what's working, what's not, yep. and that process will naturally come. But as we talked, it, then insert the tools. I think that's just the biggest thing and, and takeaway from today is design the process, go get the tools. Yeah. It's not the product. It's not the tools. It's you and the value that you bring with like the process and the value that you create. Yep. I mean, I think that's, that's, that's the ticket. Well, that's what you have control over at the end that's of the right. day. We don't have control over insurance pricing for the most part. You know, we don't have control over what the market does. We don't have control over a lot of these things. Yep. But we do have control over what we do for clients, right? Hundred percent. Awesome. Well, that was good. I could we could probably talk about that all day because we do sometimes. Dude, <laughs> but, this stuff gets me jacked up. Like, yeah. I want to go work on it right now. <laughs> but uh, we'll continue the conversation on the on the pod over time because I think it's super important and a lot of this is how a lot of times we can get past the premium. This is this is That's getting it. past the premium. That's right. So, so stay tuned. Later.